Get it, everyone. And we will finish off with our raid of these damn eight robot masters with a boss I really do hate. Magnus Centipede. Is he hard? Not at all. But if you've seen my Metal Gear Solid LPs, you'll realize why. And my initial um, script, well, not really script, but my initial plan for that actual LP was the fact to do this part of the level. Uh, you sort of had to sneak around and maybe not get caught and alerted. But here, yeah, um, I actually couldn't see these spotlights when I actually did the recording. <laughs> I just sort of knew where they are. Uh, it must be my emulator or my recording software, but I actually couldn't capture it, which sucks. But again, it's not very hard to avoid. And avoiding them would let us get the armor upgrade that was up top of that ledge before. We're not doing armor upgrades or power-ups, so it doesn't matter to us one bit. Keep it hard, and we have our use of the 3DFX chip that was employed on this game. Uh, a few games used it uh, around this time, say Star Fox, uh, Yashi Story, etc, etc, but they just, uh, they were just employed just to be able to render vectors better just for two parts in this game, and this is one of them. But this boss isn't that hard. All you have to do is just pretty much know its patterns. He always telegraphs its abilities, unless you get hit there and you mistime your opportunity, because I'm an idiot. But yeah, all you have to do is just bait him out, watch out for a second swipe, and shoot him down. If you can, just get shots in, but again, you can't hit his blade. So swipe, shoot. When he does a spinning one, uh, you just gotta make sure how many times he spins before he uh, actually takes a nice little stab at you with his nice back vectors. And again, they have more security systems right there. All you have to do is just go from the right to the left, and it should be easy to avoid. Not that it matters anyway, because if you get caught, it just makes this part a little bit harder. And getting caught by the actual cursor right there would make this mid-boss a little bit harder. But I can't remember exactly how much harder because I haven't been caught by those things in a while. Very, very, very easy to avoid. And I think he actually makes this guy a little bit stronger. It takes longer to kill. And I'm not going to do that. I'm lazy. But his patterns... I can't remember exactly. I remember he shoots up and down a lot more and I think he shoots out more lasers when he jumps up. But otherwise I can't remember exactly. This guy itself is tedious enough. And not having my buster upgrade makes things a little bit longer. But I don't mind. And we have our final dash. The alert, bitches. And I nearly died there. <sighs> Wall jumping, um. Taking out the fun out of platforming since 1993. I think that's when the first Mega Man X came out. And here we are, we're at the Psycho Mantis fight. I mean, Magda Centipede fight. <sighs> Again. If you see my Metal Gear Solid LP, this boss is a pushover. I wasn't even trying, to be honest here. The only thing I didn't show in the other one is the fact that he teleports around, but you cannot be standing where he teleports, otherwise he will get hit. But otherwise, you have that move, you know, the teleporting move, as well as the move where he shoots his tail out and he pretty much spirals around and you just gotta make sure you see where he ends up. And he also has another move which I don't think he's used on me since. Maybe it's just the way I play or something, I just don't actually enter that loop or some sort, but he is... he usually shoots like three little spiked bullets that you can sort of avoid just by jumping, but he hasn't actually done it. Oh, and you have to be careful of that jump as well sometimes, because that's a little bit random. But again, very easy boss. Probably the easiest boss um, amongst eight, eight robot monsters, masters, monsters. Ooh, got him with a lemon shot. And here's a bit of a fact. Did you know that in European Renaissance, the women would use lemons as a means of making their lips red? Sort of their 
version of lipstick back in the day. Yeah. Nice little random fact for you. Because we're just shooting lemons at the bosses in the front center, why not? And we also have Crystal Snail. Apparently I heard that snails were probably the most happiest animals in the world. Or insects. I'm not exactly what it is, but they're always quite slow. They're never in any need to get anywhere in a rush, you know? That's a true sign of happiness, right? Always being content. And that's the same with this level right here. Uh, you just gotta make sure you take things a bit slow so you don't get crushed by the uh, pat pillars there. Otherwise, it's insta kill. Just like the last level I <laughs> played. And another thing you gotta worry about is those um, crystal things right there shooting those um, bouncing bullets. They're usually pretty hard to avoid, and they put them in places which make it impossible to progress without some sort of weapon, without getting hit. But again, they're pretty weak. And this is one of my favorite mini bosses <laughs> in the game. Probably because of the um, dodging elements, and you have the ability to, um, you know, tight controls, quick speeds, you know, it's all fun. And you can usually beat this, uh, kill this boss in one here if you have the wheel alligator weapon. But I like Buster shotting him, and he gets a little bit high when you have two, <laughs> two things going off at the same time. But he's fun to dodge. I've always wanted a uh, Mega Man X game where you sort of, you know, have to avoid an onslaught of crazy uh, bullets and enemies here and there. But we won't see that until X6, the one that everyone hates so much, but I like. I think just everyone just hates it because it ruins the storyline. And it's a bit silly here and there. But in terms of gameplay, it's not that bad. It's the hardest one. But I am digressing from the point of Mega Man to X2. Nanily said that, didn't I? <sighs> so here we have it. We are at Crystal Snail. And it takes forever just to uh, get the boss initiated right there. What is this? A Metal Gear Solid boss? I deviate from the point. Anyway, all you have to do is worry about his uh, jet shots right there. Um, that's not very snail-like. Like, giving a snail jets probably makes it a little bit faster than it's actually being, but oh well. Things you gotta worry about is those um, when he actually shoots directly towards you like that, and his crystal shots. Sometimes they're very hard to avoid because they're a little bit random. Sometimes he likes to shoot him really fast, sometimes he doesn't, and sometimes he just likes to give you a bit of an onslaught of those shots. Yeah, he recovers really quickly, but the thing you gotta worry about is just that, and yeah, these rapid movements that he does, because they're pretty powerful. But you can always struggle out if you get hit by the actual crystal shots right there, so it's not that much of a big deal. So it doesn't really matter if you get hit, because obviously it doesn't really do that much. Maybe it makes things a bit slower, but uh, if you're really lazy and you want to take things a little bit easier, just because, you know, I'm doing just one recording. If I die, I end up dying, you'll see me dying, but otherwise it's... It's not much of a threat if I'm just not caring about it. But when we get to the last uh, three levels, the X Hunters, you'll see me struggling. Especially during the last bosses. But here we also have his final attack, which makes everything else slow. Doesn't really matter if you're playing this on an emulator like most 80% of the people would do, and they've already got frame rate issues in the first place. It just seems more like at home to them. And give me a love of lemon shot. Yeah, there we go. Here's something you can actually treat your acne with the lemon uh, citrus acid. Actually helps a fair bit. Yeah. What's our next boss? Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, okay, this is probably the easily the most annoying boss of the whole uh, game, I should say. Wheel Gator. Oh, did I say Wheel Alligator before? I don't remember. But this whole level, the whole theme of it is that you're on this giant gator tank thing uh, going on a rampage in the city. And if you really suck and you keep on dying, the, um, I don't know, maybe the actual tank goes back and, you know, goes through the town and kills you. you know, just to give Big Man a bit of a head start. But if you actually destroy the boss, uh, he ends up stopping. Um, the actual tank obviously stops. Um, which doesn't really change that much, really. The uh, buildings in the background just stop moving. So it's not that much of a change. It's just an aesthetic thing. I actually remember that um, another one of these bosses in Mega Man X2 as well, if you actually beat the boss, it changes things. I think it might be Flame Stag, where the actual lava stops, um, or oh, hardens up and you can sort of jump on it and make that level even easier. But uh, again, I um, don't really remember. This game sort of prevents backtracking. There's not that much backtracking involved in this game if you know what level to take each time. But again, this level isn't too bad. It's got some bottomless pits and spiked walls, but really, it's, pretty, it's just pretty much straightforward. It's not as cool as, say, Storm Eagle stage in Mega Man X1, but I'm deviating from the point right now of Mega Man X2. Which people say is the, probably the weaker entry in the game, in the series maybe. Again, people say it might be actual X6, but again. I like the art and the music in that game. The music in this art's really cheesy. <laughs> Some people might like it, but... Ooh, one of these guys. I love these guys. <laughs> you guys are fun to actually shoot and jump and get your rhythm right. Not that he matters for the next boss fight anyway, because I'm probably going to take this very lacklusterish. <sighs> if you actually use the weakness against this boss, it'll take longer than if you just do what I'm doing right now. Playing it properly. But he depends because it's very random dependent. The only thing you gotta worry about is those shots right there. But if you actually pay attention to the actual river of oil, whatever it might be, you can sort of tell when he's gonna jump up. So you're always safe. You always know when he's gonna um, just grab you out of the air. So it's actually alright to be standing on where the actual oil is when it's moving a lot. But when it slows down, just jump up. And look, the actual wheels that he shoots, they take up absolutely no health anyway, so there's no danger. I don't know how people play this with using the actual armor upgrade because uh, halving the actual damage really makes this way too easy. You can't die. Except for maybe one of the two or two of the X hunters later on. Where things get a little bit hardcore and bananas. Again, just avoid the uh, wheels. Gators don't have wheels. But it's one of the cooler bosses in this game. Oh, and then just saying maybe the next two games, X2 and X3. Alligators are pretty cool. Alligators? Oh, that's right, alligators. Unless they have a crocodile one, which is actually bigger. Crocodiles are bigger than alligators, right? Yes, they are. <sighs> I don't know, I'm Australian. We don't have alligators here, we're crocodiles. Two totally different animals, apparently. And what you've got to think is you've got to worry about those, uh, his spinning move right there, which attacks the wall and you can't jump on it. And there's another shot of vitamin C right there for you. Hmm, that's another fact that I know about lemons. Um, Oh yes, right, the uh, citric acid in lemons actually helps your digestion system, so if you want to lose weight, eat some more lemons. But otherwise, that's another video. Thank